Hi guys, and I'm going to do a small review on this Avoguide, the Skywatcher Avoguide I have. Uh, I bought this more than a year ago now, I think. Um, normally it doesn't come obviously with this guide scope, I modified it. I'm going to remove it now. Let's put that aside. Normally it comes like this, obviously without the camera. I'm going to remove the camera as well. And uh, you can see it comes like this. Uh, you have uh, in, the, in the package you have you can switch this dovetail to a guide scope to guide scope mount, so you can use it as a guide scope as well. But my purpose is I bought it for imaging. All I can say is that's a really nice telescope. It gives very wide field view of uh, large nebulae. It has 242 millimeters focal length and uh, 50 millimeters aperture. It's the same as a sea star basically, uh, considering how oh, like the aperture. But um, uh, this this telescope is really good because it has, as you can see, Skywatcher Avogad ED. So this has ED glass. Inside it, the glass is like uh, between an achromat and an apochromat, so it doesn't have much chromatic aberration. But when you start boosting the saturation up, it does show a bit of chromatic aberration. So it's not a real apochromat, but it's a semi apochromat. Uh, it's around 300, 300 euros, I think, something like that. The flattener is separate. I'm going to remove it to show it to you. This flattener is around 100 something. It's uh, the, sky, the Skywatcher flattener, the stock one. There is a flattener from Starizona because this flattener has an issue that with the SLR uh, it doesn't focus, if I remember well. So some people buy the Starizona flattener. It's more expensive, but it works. It works with all cameras. But since I don't use a, use a DSLR, this works for me. And uh, normally I just connect. Obviously, you have to you have to have the flattener uh, to, to connect your camera. Um, with this, with this, if you're going to use this telescope for imaging, I recommend getting the flattener because without it, you will get lots of uh, lots of aberrations in the corners. So it's not really worth it. And uh, I, I did this uh, guiding mount, like a DIY job. <laughs> As you can see, it works, it's solid, sort of, but it works. Um, and in total, with the it was 380 euros in total with the flattener and the telescope. As you can see, it was, this with the dovetail. I'm going to show you on my adventure mount. So you see. It mounts like this, like this, and um, obviously, obviously, I need to connect the flattener and the camera, and the camera focuses without any back back focus, just with this one. But if you're using a filter. Uh, you need to put, I'm going to show you, I have it because I have it now. Uh, normally this is the back end that it comes with. The avoid it doesn't come with the flattener. The flattener size is separate. But if you want to use um, um, camera and filter, you need this. M42 ring adapter, I believe it is this one. So you need this, you connect this ring inside the camera. And you turn it in. I'm basically turning the, the ring inside. And it stops. And then you get your filter. 
and the thread it in like that. And if you screw this like this, it will uh, it will focus. But if you use if you try using because normally this this flattener has uh, normally this flattener has has thumb screws here that you can lock a, a nose piece in here. If you use the nose piece, it won't focus with the filter. So be, keep that in mind that if you are going to use the filters with the telescope, you need the steering. I don't I don't know. I think it's an M42. I'm not really sure. M42 to M48 to M42 ring. I think it's called. And uh, if you use that and th these screws, you can unscrew to remove the telescope out of here. Um, to, to clean the telescope, you can remove the lens. You can remove this ring here and then unscrew, unscrew the lens like this. It comes off and you can clean it. I'm not going to remove it because I, I just clean mine. So I don't need, really need to remove it. And is it worth it for a beginner? I'd say yes, because it's not that expensive. Like uh, 300... 80 euros in this hobby is uh, not really expensive. So, and you can add guiding. You can you can buy a custom made uh, one of these because it doesn't come with it, so you have to make one or buy one and uh, put the guide scope and guide. Uh, you can use no guiding because I used I used to use this telescope without guiding. You will get with this mount. You will get six, 60, even two minutes exposures without start rays, but but occasionally the mount will start dumping frames because there will be slight slight trails and you will get messed up. So it's better to use guiding in, uh, in the long run. And uh, it works, as I said, with the SLR. Be careful because they won't they won't focus with this flatness. So you have to use. As far as I know, they won't focus because I've read online. So we have to use the stars on a flatner. Uh, but as far as like pinpoint stars, it has pinpoint stars all across the frame with this, with this flatner. So you, you don't have to worry about that. If you like to pixel peep, like some people do, I don't, I don't do that. But if you like to pixel peep, like zooming in in the image, you, you won't have any issues like pinpoint stars. I will put some uh, images at the end of this video. So you can know what uh, what you can expect with this telescope, and uh, I use the 705C. I have used the 178MC. I have used the deep sky camera. They all they all focus fine. And to turn the focuser, you turn this one. The focuser is a little weak on this telescope. Like sometimes you, when you achieve focus, you start turning and nothing will happen. There's, there seems to be kind of backlash in the in the focuser, but it works. It's just a little inconvenient. And what I don't like about about this focuser is when you lock it up like this. As you can see, it's still turning. I have no idea why. I, I've read online, some people had the same issue. Uh, it keeps turning. So the focuser could be better. But you know, if it uh, doesn't, it doesn't shift the focus. If it shifts very, very, very slow, small amount, it shifts. So if, obviously, if you can check it during the night, or you have an electronic focuser, it's better. But the focuser is a little uh, cumbersome. Like, it doesn't have a rack and pinion. Obviously, it's supposed to be a guy scope. That's why it doesn't have a rack and pinion. But all in all, I really like this telescope. And the fact that it has the dovetail, and 50 millimeters, it's just not bad as far as aperture. It's not really good to be honest, but uh, it's like this. It's like the Z star, 50 millimeters, and it's, it's good for begin for starting. I still use it, even though I've been two years into the hobby now. So, and what I like about it is how you balance it. Balancing is really a breeze with this one. Like it's really light. It's like I don't know, I don't know, one kilogram, I think only, but even less, I think. It weighs this one like 800 grams or something like that. And that's it basically. And to rotate the image, 
like you, you, you're going to rotate it. You can rotate the, the telescope like this. So no need to remove the camera and mess with that. You can uh, you can remove it you move it like that. If you like this video, give it a, a thumbs up and subscribe. So you can support me, and I will see you next time.